Defender, The Sanctuary Series, Volume 1, by Robert J. Crane. Prologue is somewhere. The blood pounded in his ears as he rode his horse into the wind. We're close to the end now, he thought. The plains of Pergamum had set upon by a blistery autumn wind. It whipped across the front gate of Rikonos, through the crops of the farmer's fields, all the way to the valleys and passes of the higher mountains. It was an ill wind out of the north, from beyond the torrid sea, and it smelled of decay. Nestled at the split of the river Perda, at the place where the northern branch flowed to the torrid sea, and the eastern tributary flowed into the bay of lost souls. There was a crater in the ground, gaping, enormous. The only signifying mark on it was a simple headstone with an engraving that in beautiful flowing script explained how the crater came to be in the midst of the smooth, unbroken crowns of the plains. From across the lonely fields came the black-cloaked figure on a white horse, making his way toward the scar in the ground. His travelling cloak revealed the boots of metal and hands that were encased in gauntlets. The hood of the cloak was raised, and no helmets could be seen underneath. He rode to the edge of the crater and dismounted. With a gentle stroke of the back of the horse, he walked away, a few murmured words in its ear. It whinnied at him in a friendly way. He stared across the gap for a moment before his eyes came to rest on the monument. Granite, glorious, a testament to the courage and fortitude of a group of fighters, so noble that it took the power of the very gods themselves to wipe them from the lands of Arcadia. A feeling stirred, deep in his soul, one not felt in years, one of longing, of regret, of the barest, most skeletal sense of fear. The last sensation was the most curious, since the tall cloaked stranger had not felt afraid for a very, very long time. He shook it off. He had seen great and terrible things in his time, and this was not nearly the worst of the trials he had faced. Tracing his way back to the horse, he reached into a saddlebag and pulled out a leather-bound tome. The worn cover indicated that the volume was hundreds, possibly even thousands of years old. A string marked the spot in the book that he was searching for, and once opened, he knelt and began to murmur an incantation. Reaching under his armor, his hand touched something close to his chest. Invoking powers he had never called upon before, he whispered, I invoke thee who hear my plea. I request thy aid for those who are soon to die. Closing the book, he centered his vision upon the crater. A flash lit his eyes as powerful magics moved before him. Seconds later, another flash, then another. Then lightning radiating from the crater center, a shock wave of energy issued forth, followed by a loud crack that shook the countryside. The traveler, already kneeling, caught himself with his right hand, moved by the release of the power before him. An ethereal vision confronted him, like wisps of smoke. Something began to wave and drift in the crater. Growing more solid, lines took shape, and what began as the faintest afterimage became a building. It contained elegant lines and stones, archways and towers, but had distinctly different appearance than a castle. It was made for a different purpose than housing an army and protecting its subjects, and was fading into view only once there was only the nothingness of the crater. The traveler rose from the ground, cloak left before him. His blackened armor glinted in the overcast day. His swords marked him as a warrior. His eyes surveyed the scene before him as though he were singing a long-lost friend. And for the first time in long memory, the warrior smiled.